Greetings YouTube, Fuzzfinger here and I've been trialling out this new build which I found on Diablo fans. So this one is courtesy of Lord Fluffy, I'll put a link in the video description. And it's a speedrun build for the Necromancer. And it's perhaps one of the better if not the best speedrun builds for the Necromancer that's currently available. Blizzard have said that the Pestilence set is the set that they invented for speedrunning with this class. But in fact it turned out that the Pestilence set is pretty rubbish. So this actually uses the Inaria set. So how can you speedrun with the Inaria set, I hear you ask? Well, I'm going to explain in this video. So please do come and join me. If you enjoy watching, don't forget to hit the like button. Be subscribed to my YouTube channel to be kept up to date with future episodes. And let's get on with the show. First things first, let's just take a brief look at the skills. We're using Blood Rush with the Molting Rune in order to move around quickly. And we're also going to be using Frailty with Aura of Frailty so that we're constantly cursing the enemies around us. We're going to be using Corpus Explosion which will be our main source of damage with the Close Quarters Rune equipped. And then we'll be using Bone Armor with the Harvest of Anguish Rune. Uh, and then we're going to be using Command Golem with Flesh Golem. This is going to allow us to recapitulate on corpses when we need them. And with the Corpse Explosion rune, we need to just be in range of those corpses as we cast it. And then finally, Land of the Dead, a good all-round ability. And with this build, we're going to be able to reduce the cooldowns as well. So let's just take a brief look now at the passive skills. And we're going to be using Spreading Malediction, pretty bread and butter as well, along with Command of the Risen Dead. It's important that we get the cooldown uh, reduction of the Golem in place there. Final service, just for emergency use, this is a speedrun build, so it's not going to be topped up with armour or damage reduction that much, although we are using Unity, which you'll see in a second. And then Standalone, which will give us a 90% uh, increase in armour because of our Golem, but still a really good boost, so I do recommend using this as a passive. Uh, in terms of gear then and equipment, we're going to be using the Tragel's Corroded Fang as our main weapon. But we're going to be cubing the Ingeum or Ingeum or whatever that thing's called. So depending on what your best role is of those two weapons, feel free to swap those around if need be as well. So that Ingeum, by the way, with the uh, effect that it has reducing our cooldowns every time we kill Elite Packs, it reduces our cooldowns for 15 seconds by 10 seconds so hopefully that makes sense so that's going to basically mean we're going to be able to dart all over the place with blood rush which is going to be our movement ability which we want to be spamming all the time and also we're going to be able to keep casting command golem to keep those corpses uh, incoming ready for our corpse explosion so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, aoe damage with this build but in terms of gear then, so we've got the Corroded Fang. Uh, in terms of offhand, I recommend the Lost Time. The uh, build says you can use the green set shield as well. But in all honesty, more movement speed we have, the better. Then we're going to go for the six piece Inarius set. Alternatively, you can go for five pieces if you wish to do so. And then you can equip the Ring of Royal Grandeur perhaps in the weapon. Uh, and then you could go ahead and use the Moribound Gauntlets. Uh, instead of using full six pieces of Inarius set since that will uh, give you extra corpses to blow up and more corpses is a good thing but I'm just going with the traditional setup that the guide explains on Diablo fans for the time being uh, rings you want to go for Crispin sentence flat out damage buff something that we're going to be making good use of and as I mentioned we're going to be using double unity unity on our character unity on our follower and we're going to be using the Johnstone neck item here, necklace. Uh, or you could be using the one that you've got equipped in the cube, which is the Wisdom of, I can't think what it's called now, uh, Wisdom of Kalan, if you want to swap those round. Again, depending on what draws you get or what stats you get on each one. Uh, and then finally, oh no, second to finally rather, we're going to be using the Nemesis Bracers. I do recommend that you get crit instead of whatever it is I've got on here. What is it? Cold damage. Uh, we do prefer crit and intelligence. And then finally, this time, we would like to use the Witching Hour. It's just a flat out damage buff. And the more damage we have on a speed farming build, obviously, the better. Uh, make sure you build up some cooldown reduction amongst your items. Stick a Royal Diamond into your head socket there. 
You want to try and aim to it for about 45%. I've got mine to about 40 and a half, uh, but I'm doing okay actually with that amount of cooldown reduction. But I believe the guide on Diablo fans does recommend uh, 45 for cooldown reduction. So I do need to try and build that up a little bit. In terms of your weapon, you want to try and get cooldown reduction and uh, plus damage percentage on an ancient weapon uh, or primal, I guess. So if I had the choice, I would have not had vitality on this weapon, but instead had plus 10% of damage. Obviously, I can only reforge one stat, so I got rid of whatever the rubbish stat was on there before I put cooldown reduction on. But I did need that cooldown reduction, so I went for that over the uh, damage percent. Uh, but that's about it in terms of items and skills, so let's have a look at how this build does in the actual gameplay side of things. And my gear, by the way, is far from optimised. I've literally just hubbled this together in order to show this video off. So I do need to do a lot of optimization with this gear. But even so, hopefully this is going to give you a good example. And it'd be nice to get some enemies. So this build is going to start speeding up as the enemies start coming in. Especially as we start killing the champ packs. And here goes down the first. And that's going to proc it in Geom, so you can basically then just start moving around all over the shop quickly. And as you can see, it's build's pretty sick when it gets going. Let's start killing some of these elites here. This is on Torment 13, and which is the highest Torment difficulty. And this is with unoptimised gear. That needs to recharge. Just try and find these elite packs since they're the ones that are going to keep your cooldowns reduced thanks to uh, Ingeon. And then even your Land of the Dead ability is going to be up quite a lot of the time quite frankly. I mean just look how fast these packs are dying. And then when they do die we haven't got a prat about trying to move uh, you know, by running or what have you, because we can just use our Blood Rush ability on immediate cooldown. And we're just tearing through this rift, absolutely tearing through, so I'll throw my golem in there, that'll get some corpses going, and look at that, champ pack's dead, and we can just once again teleport around to a new champ pack, here we go, let's throw that land of the dead up, means we don't need to worry about corpses, while we just obliterate the elites here. This is a good build. Fun build this is. I must wait. And we haven't even found any pylons yet. Must serve the oh, this is lovely. This is what a hack and slash game's about, isn't it? And let's just keep moving around. No doubt we're going to be heading towards the exit now of this uh, particular rift level. Make sure you keep your bone armour up as well. Don't spam it to the point where you just run out of essence all the time, but do keep it on quite often on the new packs of enemies that you encounter. Just be careful with it because when you basically have NG I'm active, you can spam bone armour and easily run out of essence because you're not paying attention. But as long as you don't get into that habit, you should be fine. Where haven't we explored on this floor? Good job we got this uh, blood rush rune look. I'm gonna mess around, have we? Even the goblins don't stand a chance, bless them. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't wait to get into the new season at the end of this month. And see how many uh, items and materials and everything we can farm. Oh, that was with no cooldowns, that was. 
didn't stand a chance. This is teleport through the crap. Oh, Fear is not very good, could die here. It's kind of stuck. So you can get the odd bad pack. Managed to survive somehow though. Ah. Oh. Try and avoid the corpse explosions, of course. So we survived because of our passive skill. Last stand, it's called. Keeps us alive and keeps us healed as well. I should really save Land of the Dead for the Rift Guardians, but I just want to show you the speed that you can kill with it. Come over here. Yeah, so it's a good idea to save the Land of the Dead ability is the one thing I would say for the Rift Guardian. If you die, just keep your bone armor stacks back up as quickly as possible, really. As soon as we can get this uh, ability back up, you'll see how powerful it is, this Land of the Dead. On single target encounters, and it looks like it's back up now. So, this should be over at this point. There you go, look. It's the only thing you want to watch, really. But yeah, guys, that's this build, speed farming build. A lot of fun, I've got to say that. A lot of fun. I need to go back. Let's go and hand this in, see what loot we managed to swag. Probably nothing exciting. But I am trying to optimise this gear, so it's always good to check, I guess, isn't it? Get rid of the crap. Wisdom of Kalan, so that's the one you can mix and match with Johnson Stone, depending on what you want in the cube and what you don't. But now it doesn't look like there's anything interesting for us off this one, unfortunately. But at least we got to experience the build. Okay, folks, so that's the Speed, Rhyming, uh, speed Farming Torment 13 Corpse Mancer build for the Necromancer. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and come back soon and maybe we'll, you know, go and witness some more builds as well. I'm thinking of streaming the season journey for this uh, account as well, so maybe you'll want to... Come and join me for that once the season does start. But that's it for me for today, folks. So thanks for dropping by. Do come back again soon. Until then, take care, and I'll see you later.